Wormwood, I have been in correspondence with Slum Trimpet, who is in charge of your patience, young woman, and I begin to see the chink in her armor. It is an unobtrusive little vice which she shares in common with many young women who have grown up in an intelligent circle united by clearly defined belief, and it is quite simply the untroubled assumption that all outsiders who do not share this common belief are simply too stupid or ridiculous. Her confidence, which she thinks is derived from faith, comes primarily from the mere color she has taken from her surroundings. It is not, in fact, very different from the conviction she would have felt at the age of ten that the computers used in her house were the normal or proper or real kind, and those used in neighboring houses are not real computers at all. The amount of ignorance and naivete in this is so large, and the amount of spiritual pride so small that we have very little hope of the girl herself. But, have you considered how this can be used to influence your patient? It is always the novice who exaggerates. One who has risen through society is over-refined. The young scholar is pedantic. In this new circle, your patient is a novice. He is there daily, meeting a quality of Christian life he never before imagined, and seeing it all through an enchanted glass because he is in love. He is anxious, and indeed, the enemy commands him to imitate this quality. Can you get him to imitate this defect in his mistress, and to exaggerate it to the point where what was excusable in her is in him the most delicious of vices, spiritual pride? The conditions seem ideally favorable. This new circle in which he finds himself is one of which he is tempted to be proud for many reasons other than its Christianity. It is better educated, more intelligent, and more agreeable society than any he has yet encountered. He is also under some illusions as to his position within it. Under the influence of love, he may still feel himself unworthy of the girl, but he is rapidly finding himself not feeling unworthy of the others. He has no notion of how much in him is forgiven because they are loving, and how much is made the best of because he is now part of the family. How much of his conversation, how many of his opinions they recognize as echoes of his own, and how much he enjoys being with them because he sees everything through the enchanted lens which the girl throws for him around everything that she passes. He thinks that he likes their talk and way of life because of some congruity between their spiritual condition and his, when in fact, if he were not in love, he would be merely puzzled and repelled by much which he now accepts. It is as if a dog thought that it understood firearms because its instincts and its love for its master enabled it to enjoy a day's shooting. Here is your chance. While the enemy, through the means of sexual love and some very agreeable people far advanced in his service, is drawing the young barbarian up to levels he could never otherwise have reached, what you want to do is make him feel that he is finally coming to his own level, that these people are his sort, and that he has come among them and now come home. When he goes to other society, he will find it dull, partly because any other society within his reach is less entertaining, and partly because he will miss the enchantment of the young woman. You must teach him to mistake the difference between the circle that delights him and the circle that bores him for the difference between Christians and unbelievers. He must be made to feel, he'd better not put it into words, how different we Christians are. And by we Christians, he must unknowingly mean my set. And by my set, he must not mean those who have in their love and humility accepted me, but rather those with whom I associate by right. Success here depends on confusing him. If you try to make him explicitly and professedly proud of being a Christian, you will probably fail. The enemy's warnings are far too well known. If, on the other hand, you allow the idea of we Christians to drop out altogether and merely make him complacent about my set, then you will not have produced true spiritual pride at all, but merely social vanity, which is, by comparison, a trifling, useless little sin. What you want is to keep a sly self-congratulation mixing with all his thoughts, and never allow him to raise the question, what am I congratulating myself about? The idea of being in an inner ring, of being in on a secret, is quite sweet to him. Play on that. Teach him, using this girl when she is silliest, to adopt an air of amusement at things unbelievers say. Some theories which he will find in modern Christian circles may be helpful here. Theories, I mean, which place the hope of society in a small inner circle of clerks on some minority of trained theocrats. It does not matter to you whether these theories are true or false. The great thing is to make Christianity into a mystery religion and make your patient feel that he is one of the initiates. Please do not fill your tweets with rubbish about the resumed conflict and unrest. The final results are, no doubt, important, but that is a matter for high command. I am not in the least bit interested in the number of people in your area who have been killed by police. The state of mind in which they died, I can learn from the records office here. And that they were going to die sometime, I knew already. Keep your mind on your work. 